Hello, hello, fellow viewers. It's your boy back here again. And today we'll be taking a look at the Ipoh Maker Brick 87 keyboard. So bricks or Lego inspired keyboards, I can say like that, have seen some spotlights in recent years. Well, we have the um, Pixel Planet by Melgeek and also KBD Crafts Kit Adam. Um, both of which are quite popular in terms of executing the idea of custom keyboard with Legos. But the Brick 87 is kind of different. I guess it is like somewhere in between. So let's find out what it actually is and what's inside the box as well. So we have the box right here. Well, the design kind of tells us what it's going to li look like. And you also have kind of a um, pixel names also like pictures here brick 87 yeah so you open up we got the keyboard here okay we got the keycap and switch puller we got user manual and underneath you got USB cable uh, extra keycaps for your Mac keys and also some pieces of Lego oh. Lego, Lego, okay. Trademarks are there for some reason. Okay. So now when you take a real good look at it, uh, it is not like the two I mentioned just now. Only the front part is Lego-y. Yep, the whole body is basically plastic as you would expect because I guess aluminum and Lego are just weird combination. But anyway, um, this is a TKL layout, hence the 87 in its name. And as the box says, it's got the tri-mode connection with indicators on the top right side. And just beside it, this one, it is a toggle switch to let you switch between the Bluetooth 2.4 gigahertz and also wired. But there's one thing that baffles me, which is the on-off switch. They put it on the left side? Like why? Uh, I think that if you put it on the same side, it kind of makes the entire thing much more It makes more sense for productivity purpose because you can access both of them at the same time And the toggle switch man, why so small and it's kind of like precisely to move between moods or toggle it I wish for a bigger <laughs> switch if they ever release a revamp version of the Brick 87 <laughs> But I guess it is technically harder to fat finger them, so yeah, take your pick. So to the overall shape of the keyboard, I'd say it is kind of funky or unique, depends on what you want to call it, because the first row here is like 45 degrees upwards facing. Well, this kind of reminds me of the uh, D1247 keyboard kit though. But this layout gave my fingers some hard time because each time I want to hit escape, especially I would hit the top part of the keycap instead because we usually we just like hit it straight from top to bottom, right? Well, so you definitely need some time to adapt to this, but nothing too epic for now. Well, speaking of the keycaps, we have um, several colorways to choose from from the official website. And this is the gray pink layout here not lay out the colors way and I guess it is kind of um, mimicking the uh, modern Dodge life formula here but well credit is credit I'm gonna give it to the um, overall quality because the legends are pretty consistent as well as the colors although this is the P uh, set of PPT keycaps in MDA profile and uh, presumably dies up because I don't see any double shot patterns on the bottom and the inside they are actually quite smooth, which is surprising. And the switch underneath is the Apple Maker Peace Lily switch, rocking this kind of green housing and white stem, which is quite pretty, in my opinion, and it's called quite of zenish for that peace, um, green nature kind of feeling. And it has a full palm housing, yet the stem is actually PC stem. Well, not a lot of switches use this, but it is technically doable and it actuates at 42 grams and borders out at 47 so kind of lighter than your average middle pack switches but it is using a 3.6 millimeter total travel so yeah I guess it feels more or less like a long pole switch 
So let's give it a quick stop sound test and see how it fares. Now this is by far one of the loudest keyboards that I've experienced given that it uses a plastic case. For me, it can actually rival some of the, you know, heaviest like no form aluminum boards out there in terms of amplitude. And it has been quite some time since I have a stock keyboard that has stabilizers this good. You can listen to it again if you are skipping the sound test for whatever reason, so yeah. I seriously won't be nitpicking on this and I can say that this is practically perfect, especially for its price which I'll talk about later. Well, not sure if you can really catch the core sound of it as being bricky because there's a bit of harshness inside the entire sound profile because according to the website, it uses a steel plate rather than, you know, PC plate like everywhere it the custom keyboard scene. Well, I guess so this is an actual low accurate keyboard from the get-go. Well, as for the switches, the overall feeling is like um, somewhat close to the Wisterius, which I reviewed in the Dynatap 75X. Well, I said that the Peace Lily is still good, but I still just hear just tiny bit of scratch. So you, if you really want to compare them stock to stock, I'll pick the Wisterius, but this is just a reference thing. I will still put the Peace Lily on the recommended list. You can grab them if you like them. Oh, also, let's not forget this little thing on the bottom side. Well, this is actually a scroll wheel. And it's not just one. They actually have both sides, left and right. They are separated, so you can actually have two functions from the get-go. Well, I think the design is at least um, user-friendly in terms of accessibility because you can just use your thumb to like roll it without even leaving the standard typing zone. So yeah, it's pretty cool like this, I could say. Yeah, since I did not configure the scroll wheel, well, therefore it is fully stock. The left side actually controls the volume of your device, which is nice. While the right side is just for adjusting RGB brightness. Um, so yeah, this is the Epo Maker Brick 87 and at just $99, this is actually pretty compelling, even just factoring in in the basic things like typing field, stabilizer tuning, and the qualities and the trimo connection. And the scroll wheel and the overall look, I think this is just extra points if you really like them, if you really use them, and you can also slap some extra logo sets on the front side if you do own them. If you're compared to so many offerings from Epo Maker, this does come with a smaller battery at just 3000 mAh, so you'll be sure to charge regularly, or you can just dish the RGB all together to have more battery life. So if a hunk of metal isn't what you favor for keyboards, then well, do try out the Brick 87. And that's all for this video. You got any questions, leave it down in the comments, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.